friends. I am going to do my April wrap up. I read, I read six things this month, which is pretty damn good for me. I think usually I read like four. Let's get into it. I read a total of 2,312 words this month. I read one historical fiction, three science fiction, one horror, and one contemporary or literary fiction. I gave one four and a half star, two four stars, a three and a half star, and a three star. First thing I read was Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. I gave this 340 page book four stars. This is a historical fiction with just a touch of fantasy. A story about a girl and her brother, and it takes place back during World War I. Her brother goes and joins as a soldier, and she is a nurse. Along the way, they end up getting separated, and they assume that he's dead. And this is her search, her journey, trying to find her brother, is dual perspectives. And so you get to see her perspectives as she searches and also the brother's perspective and understanding the things that he's going through after a traumatic experience. This also introduces a supernatural type of character in which Catherine Arden really gives death, misery, and suffering a face and an identity, which is a really unique idea and take, and it made it very palpable and visceral. I thought that this was really well done. Catherine Arden's writing is beautiful. So four stars, I would definitely recommend. The next thing I read was The Lesser Devil by Christopher Rocchio. This is a short story, and it is number 1.5 in the Sun Eater series. I believe it is like 172 pages. In this story, you get the perspective of Crispin, who is Hadrian's younger brother. Throughout this, I was surprised to see Crispin's perspective on his brother because Hadrian talks in all the books about their strained relationship, how they didn't like each other, how he was sure that his brother, you know, despised him. And it was interesting to see Crispin's true attitude towards his brother because all throughout this, even though Hadrian is not in this book. He is present because Crispin is constantly bringing him up and saying he wondered what Hadrian would do or how Hadrian would react. I did give this three and a half stars. I think that while Rakia's prose is great, I think that there was a little something missing and I don't know if that was because it was missing Hadrian's melodramatic flair or some of the space alien action that you get in the other books because it's all on planet and there it's between individuals there are no aliens there is tech which i did find at the end there was a great twist a great ai type uh, addition in this book that i really enjoyed so while it wasn't my favorite in the series i did enjoy it and i definitely think it added value to the storyline the next book i read was Rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C. Clarke. I gave this book four stars. It is just under 300 pages. And this is a very classic sci-fi. It was written in the 70s. So you get a lot of... A lot of description. It's description heavy. It's not very character driven. It is more along the lines of exploring this alien spacecraft through the different lenses that are the characters. You have to be okay with the lack of character development and just be excited for the journey because that's what this really is. Almost as if you are exploring this alien spacecraft with these characters, which I thought was great. I was constantly excited to find out what was going to happen next. Some of the ideas that are in this were really fun and interesting and unique. I very much enjoyed it. Like I said, I gave it four stars. And if you are a sci-fi buff and you don't need a lot of plot, because this is really, I mean, there's not a lot of plot, not a lot of character development. Like I said, it's mainly like discovery and finding out what is on the ship and what's going on. So that's about the gist of it. But I really liked it. I am always curious to see what sci-fi authors are going to come up with. And this definitely 
checked that box. The next book I read was Ashes of Man by Christopher Rocchio. This is like a 500 page book. I gave it four and a half stars. And I actually did a dedicated reading vlog for this book, which I can link here if you're interested in seeing my emotional reaction as I make my way through this chunky book. I feel like this book was inevitable in the progression of this storyline. It deals a lot with grief and guilt and Hadrian's identity struggle. At this point, after all that he's gone through, it's almost as if there are two versions of Hadrian. You know, the Hadrian that came before and the Hadrian that is now after. And as a reader going into this, you know how the story ends, but you can't imagine how it gets there because he shows you so many pieces of Hadrian, so many things of Hadrian, how he starts out at this as this really positive, person who is looking to foster peace between humans and aliens. And somewhere along the way, he changes and he turns into this very cynical person who who obviously is willing to sacrifice anything to be a sun killer. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is kind of a part of his journey to that other self. A lot of things happen in this book that were hard to read, just like many of the other books, you know, nothing changes there. But the characters in this are great. The character development is great. The plot is great. His prose is stunning as always. I really enjoyed the aspects of he he uses certain characters to mirror the different aspects of Hadrian from my perspective. The emperor, for one, who is a mirror to that person, that side of Hadrian that has the good of humanity. Okay, I'm not going to go too far into it, but there's so much in, in this and you can tell that Rocchio is a studied author. He knows his literature, he knows his history, and he incorporates all those little kernels, all those little tidbits of juicy goodness in his books. And I really feel like if you can spot them and you check them out, they just really add that little cherry on top. I highly, 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 highly recommend the Sun Eater series. I talk about it nonstop and it's for a reason. So if you haven't read this yet, highly recommend that you check it out. The next book I read was episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. This book is like almost 500 pages. I gave it three stars. This book is told in multiple formats. There is journal entries and text messages and emails and a scene like, like film scripts. It is about a crew that goes to investigate a haunted house. And it is very metaphysical and psychedelic and references higher dimensions and all these weird, quirky things. It was really fast to read and it was certainly creepy at times. There were many times that I got creeped out at night reading it and I put it down. But I think at the end, it kind of ruined it for me. I did not enjoy the ending. I thought that it was eye roll worthy, but it was compulsively readable. I powered through this, I think in like six hours. I Cause I wanted to know what was gonna happen. Like the buildup was great. Getting to the end was great. The ending itself, not so much, but maybe you would like it. I don't know. It's hard to write horror and thrillers and satisfy every reader because every reader, what scares them is so personal. And so in order to satisfy everyone, like that's a hard pill to swallow. Is that the right saying? <laughs> Anyway, it was a fun read. I, I would recommend it because who knows, you may really enjoy the way he ends it. Okay, and the last book, book number six that I read was Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I gave this book four and a half stars. It is 542 pages and it is a Pulitzer Prize winner and an Oprah Books Club book club pick and I very much enjoyed this. It is the story of Demon Copperhead who it's told in the first person. It's kind of like a memoir. It reads like a memoir in many ways but it is all about his struggle. So he is born to a teenage mother who is a drug addict and his father dies before he's born. Even at the time of his birth, he is faced with all the, with struggle, with 
with hardship and he just cannot seem to escape it. And that is what this book is about. It is very detailed. I feel like every word that the author uses in this book was for a purpose. She is very good at creating unique characters who are very distinctive and have their own quirky aspects and their own voice. And even if they show up only for a paragraph, this book was very emotional for me when I read it. It definitely feels as though you have lived alongside Demon after reading this book, like you've been a bird on his shoulder and experiencing everything right alongside of him. So it's hard not to be invested in the outcome. Yeah, just watching this poor kid who who has so many positive skills and things going for him, but he just can't seem to catch a break. But this also, I will mention, deals a lot with addiction, drug addiction, alcoholism, things of that nature. And so if you are, if that is a trigger for you, then this may not be something you want to read because that is a huge focus in this book. Yeah, I will say that there was a little bit in the in the middle where it drug out just a little bit for me, but I I do feel like it was necessary and I wouldn't say that it was it should be omitted or it was, you know, shouldn't be there. It just was a little slower. It was necessary. It just allows his story to come full circle. I highly recommend if you love literary fiction, if you love deep introspective character work, if you love flawed characters, characters that you can root for, then this one definitely might be for you. It was a Pulitzer Prize winner for a reason. So that's my wrap up. I feel like I had a great reading month and I hope that May is just as successful and enjoyable. I have some great things on my TBR for the month. I'm excited to get into it. I hope you liked this. I would love to know what you read this month. If there was anything that was just outstanding, something that I should pick up, please tell me down in the comments. Have you read any of these books? Tell me what you thought. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again soon. Many years has gone by, but I think about you, about you all the time.